Ok, facciamo entrare la macchina. Ok, let's, let's get the car get in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Urus. Illuminiamo? A little bit of light. Okay. No. Believe me, this is not easy at all, but it's more interesting, more stimulating. So let's now get to the technical core of the car so I can give the floor to Marito Reggiani, our research and development director, in order for him to explain the most important technical features of this car. Thank you very much. See you later. Hey. Okay, let's start with Urus. Well, Urus is already here with us. What I wanted to tell you is that it was a great challenge for us in the research and development department, namely to find a way to inoculate the DNA of a super sports car of a Huracan or Ventador into such a car in an Urus, an SUV car, which uh, put two question marks. First of all, the height of the car. Uh, we could, because the gravity center is very high and the weight of this car the mass which is much bigger than of course a, a normal car our goal was to have the same dna another important thing is that it must be a car that is able to move and to be driven in all uh, road surface circumstances and conditions so we needed a vehicle that can be used in a city on a road as well as on the racetrack using the accelerator pedal, the brakes and the suspensions and any dynamic element of the vehicle in the most perfect way. But this is not enough. We needed a vehicle that can be driven on earth, uh, stones, gravel, like a rally car, without any compromises. The other challenge we had to face was to have a car that is able to surf on desert dunes. So with a special setup, this car can exploit its power and drive completely on dunes, on sand and on any other road service. Not, and last but not least, low grip conditions that you can find wherever in the world, like on snow and ice. This was the, the goal we had, the task we assigned to our engineers. Then how did we do this? Where did we start? Since I had no graphics behind me, it's difficult to describe it. But when we start with a new project, we always have the radar diagram, which is a way for us to compare different cars and to identify the super sport car's features. So we define the profile of a super sport car uh, by Lamborghini, and we sort of try to understand what the SUV's features are <clears throat> among the top range, the existing top range SUV's. And then we created the profile of Urus by taking the peculiarities of the best SUVs available, keeping it as close as possible to our super sports car. And we came to the profile of Urus, which has the Lamborghini DNA. This way we defined a sort of mission. The mission is composed of individual goals that can be attained. The first one, which is the most important for, for sure for Lamborghini, is the engine, the very heart of every Lamborghini. For this vehicle, we've selected a V8 twin turbo, turbo four-liter engine with 650 HP, 850 newton meter. This is the very first turbo engine in Lamborghini's history. And for us, it was a very tough decision uh, aimed at the very purpose of this car. The turbo was necessary because this car m had to be able to do what I've, see, what, what I've said before, so to be driven on any road surface and overcoming any kind of obstacle. obstacle. So the gearbox is equipped with an electro-hydraulic torque conver converter and it has eight speeds in order to convert 
the and exploit the maximum power the best way, as I've said before. And in order to guarantee the all-wheel drive, we've introduced a completely new system, which is a central torsion differential, self-locking differential. And for the first time, a torque vectoring rear differential was introduced. This is different because it is not just able to dissipate energy, as it usually happens in differentials, when one wheel spins, when it has no grip. With torque vectoring, the torque is transferred to the other axle in order to make it possible to, have, to still have drive and to guarantee the best road grip conditions for the vehicle. And the purpose to all of this is, of course, for the vehicle to be on the ground which means to have systems that make it possible to exploit all of this energy, all of this power. On Urus, for the first time, we've implemented air suspensions, which make it possible to have different ground clearances, which makes it possible to have a lower setting for uh, the car when you want to use it on a racetrack or in a sport way, a sport way or when you use it off-roads, you can lift the car and increase the clearance in order to avoid any possible obstacles on the ground. This is not enough, of course, because also in terms of comfort, the air shock absorbers make it possible to have an optimum filtering when the car is used in the city traffic, for instance, so it guarantees extreme comfort. As you can see, the wheelbase is quite long for this car, so in order to make it more agile, we've introduced the rear wheel steering. This makes it possible for the car to improve its dexterity and it is as if the wheelbase can radically be shortened by 50 centimeters or so. So you can shorten the wheelbase or lengthen the wheelbase depending on the driving conditions in order to guarantee the best stability conditions under any circumstances. Always on this vehicle we've uh, introduced the move the active anti-roll bars, the movable anti-roll bars, which make it possible for the vehicle to change the stiffness of the suspension. So ranging from the typical race track conditions where you need stiffer suspensions on both sides or in different sides, uh, or to different stiffness when you have an irregular road surfaces in order to adapt to the road surface the best way. The braking system is something you can see straight away, I don't need to describe it. The, it's the most powerful available braking system in the world. We've got carbon ceramic brakes with 40, 40, 440 millimeters in the front and 370 millimeters in the rear, which makes it possible for such a car to be top performing and be equal to his uh, sisters in a way, to her sisters in a way. We've developed new tyres that are completely new with Pirelli. They have a different cross-section in the front and in the rear in order to make it possible for the car to be more agile and flexible, in order for it to be more sporty and to be used on the racetrack and to have a better handling. And in terms of cross-section, you've got 21 inches and 23 inches. And the th 23 inches are the biggest tires we have as a standard equipment for a car in the world, actually. This is necessary in order to create the best contact between the driver and the road surface. It is vital for the comfort use for the tires to filter any irregularities in order to reduce vibrations. But when you use the car and the racetrack, you need the driver to really feel the road surface, to really feel the track. This is the reason why this whole system is the best technical result we could ever achieve. We've been talking about power and how to transfer this power to the ground, but like in every living thing, and a human body as well, what matters is the brain, so how to have full control of this power. So we need a control system that is also easy to use. The driver doesn't have to lose time, to waste his time, uh, finding a way to manage all this. This is why we created a system you have the chance to see later on in the car, which is called Tamburo. The Tamburo is a cylinder-shaped selector located in the middle of the central tunnel for an ideal ergonomic position for you, so in the most accessible position. And thanks to this system, it is possible to use two levers. The one on the left makes it possible to just click in order to switch between the different driving modes of the car, strata, sport, 
where of course you have more fun to drive. Then you've got the Corsa, which is the most performance oriented mode where the engine really becomes wicked and it enables you to have a super sport performance. Moving on to the Sabia mode, so off-road conditions where you you have a change in all of the control systems of the car. Then Terra, which is another uh, driving mode, uh, adapting to a totally different road surface. And then Neve Snow, where the uh, grip is the best grip you can have in order to have top stability control. On the right hand side of the Tambura, there is a function that is called Ego. The Ego makes it possible for the driver to customize his or her own uh, car setup profile. So every one of you will have the chance to drive an Urus will have the opportunity to customize their own car setup with Ego. And just by clicking the Ego button, you can just activate that profile and drive in the preferred way. Let's go to the last vital element of the Lamborghini's DNA, which is design. Design is paramount. Design is one of the things you must immediately like. And for our guys working at the Centro Stile, the design department, of course, the challenge was to combine the typical style elements of our design with a completely new design if compared to the manufacture the, the vehicles we've been manufacturing in the past three decades. The LM002 is the SUV we launched in the 80s, so 30 years have gone by during which we've been only manufacturing super sports cars. So the work of the Centro Stile was really tough and it was uh, redesigning a car with these style elements and the way we used to measure the design, the way which we use in order to understand whether we've attained this result is we say every time that a Lamborghini comes you don't need to read the name or to see the logo, you can immediately tell by the design and by the sound that this is a Lamborghini. This is vital for the success our cars must have. From the performance point of view, because of course you also have to sort of measure the performance of such cars because numbers tell us where we're positioned in the market. Uh, well, Urus can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.6 seconds. 3.6 seconds is a very, very hard time for super sport cars to, to reach. Not just that, also the 0 to 200 kilometers per hour the acceleration is 12.8 and I can assure you that uh, most super sport cars in the market have a hard time reaching it. So, the as to the braking uh, performance, you've got 33.7 meters for to come to a complete stop, which makes it possible for the car to reach extreme performances. The specific power is 162 HP per liter, and I can assure you this is pretty much because the car is for sure conformant to any world's regulations and emissions requirements and the top speed is 305 kilometers per hour so it's the fastest suv in the world